Hey guys, in the third part of the podcast, we'll be talking about how to talk at the end of a match and how to talk at the end of a set. Nothing really interesting for me to say, let's just jump right in. So once one match happens, the game isn't happening anymore. So this is a good opportunity to sort of talk about, then you can sort of big, big picture a lot of the things that were going on in a match. Like one, if it's, you know, relevant to one person, one person's game plan, like are they you know, they're supposed to land a hit with Beowulf, they landed the hit, and the game went according to plan. And you sort of mentioned it like that. Or if the game didn't go according to plan, then you sort of mentioned a little bit about why that might have been the case. Like, player one wanted to get a hit with Beowulf, but couldn't because player two was keeping them out with X, Y, or Z or something. Yeah, um, um, you would you would talk about how what needs to change for players in order to change what's going on. Um, it's also between matches also the best time to go into um, real detail uh, about things that go on um, with with some exceptions like uh, explaining mechanical things if something mechanically strange happened in a set then you probably want to wait until after the or if something mechanically strange happened in a game you probably want to wait until post game to, to really go into it because it's probably better to just focus on what's going on yeah um, you know, I, I think of something like the Quicksilver glitch, where um, when that happened in tournament for the first time, um, they had to get somebody on immediately to explain what was going on, because the Quicksilver glitch in Marvel 3 was such a strange thing. But, you know, uh, that that's like an exception. Usually you don't want to explain mechanically things that are going on that are really strange during a match. Uh you want to kind of push them aside and then talk about them at the end where it's like okay well when when Mao did that DHC you know Risky was was ready to to do the counter but because Mao was ready for the counter then he could DHC immediately despite getting hit by it or whatever you know it, something like that where you can you can talk about mechanical things that happen at the end of a match uh when <laughs> when you wouldn't normally be able to find time in a match. Yeah. Like, I guess the main uh, main thing we should be mentioning is that, like, it gives you time to delve deep into scenarios that you don't have time to explain in a match, right? Right. And it also... The, the goal is to um, make sure that the, the, the previous game will be connected to the next game. Those are the two things that you're really looking to do. Yeah. And also, this sort of ties into, like, we talk about what happened in the previous match, but this also lets you lead into what should happen or could happen in the next few matches. So you could talk about, like, oh, they, the, you know, a particular assist wasn't working in the matchup, so maybe the player wants to change their assist or maybe change their team order or something like that. Or if, like, yeah. one person is known for a lot of counter picks, you could mention that, like, oh, you know, they might try to counterpick this team with something completely different or anything like that. Um, Age would be, like, a good example of a player where he might try to do something like that. Um, yeah. I would also be an example where I sometimes just pick a team based on counterpicks. Uh, I would even go so far as to say that if you you can criticize, for lack of a better word, players' overall strategies during that point because of their lack of ability to do something like that. Um where you know like me uh you know there's there's virtually nothing that i could do that i would be comfortable with where i'm switching my team around so it, you, we wouldn't expect me to change there's going to there's going to have to be something about my gameplay that changes if i'm lo i'm looking to overcome an opponent um you know you would never expect someone like chris g to switch off of you know like his his marble three team I guess there's also another thing to mention is that it is somewhat similar to the pre-match where you talk about what should what should or could happen in a match except there's a yeah. bit more context to what could happen or what should happen Absolutely. like if, if you were talking about something like like a good example would be say the Bayo A train combos right like everybody complains on or like whenever new players come onto the discord to talk about how the hard the combo is and the combo is pretty hard so if you see somebody who's like dropping, who's like a Bayo band player, but they're dropping that combo, so that that changes a bit of the narrative. Like maybe they're too nervous. Maybe they'll, they'll try something a bit easier that's less damage, 
Or maybe if they're learning it, then you talk about like, oh, they're really consistent and like it changes. It doesn't necessarily change the risk reward, but it change it like makes the other player play a bit more cautious because like they will land this difficult combo in tournament. Like stuff like mentioning stuff like that is like a good. It's it's one of the it's one of the things you can talk about that you have context from the previous match that you can mention like. That's I mean another th- other things would be just like general player strategy, but also that would be another thing you would you could mention I think. Yeah, and the the sorts of um, adaptations that you might not be able to see because they interfere with uh, uh, the Bayo band is a really good example where if somebody's Beowulf is maybe doing some amount of work or they're they're just short of being able to to take wins right but their band is getting zoned out by peacock or something like that then it really puts the player in a predicament where it's like well you know i can't i feel like i can't switch my big band because i need him for my Beowulf strategy but he's also not able to hold his own against peacock so you know that's an interesting question that players have to ask themselves and it's an interesting question to pose to an audience yeah i think we've sort of talked about most of that do you have anything else you want to mention no i I don't think there's anything else um the very end of a set we can move on yeah so i mean once all the matches in a set have happened the the set has ended right so here it's similar to the between matches part where you are talking about highlights but this is more about the highlights of the set in its entirety as opposed to what happened in individual matches you can summarize the narrative uh, at the end of a set because you've got it in its entirety and um you can you can talk about how you know your expectations were this but it was just completely different and then you can talk about how uh what what the the turning points were and what what just couldn't happen um you know adjustments that just couldn't be made things like that yeah definitely like you could talk about yeah pretty much most of that like what interesting things happened if anything if anything really funky happened if um if things were according to plan from one person or the other the overall narrative of the individual players like did the the did it go according to how the top player would have predicted it or did something unique happen that sort of threw them off guard or did the you know if an upset happened it's a pretty big deal and stuff like that like if FTD um, if FTD beat Sonic Fox 3-0 then that's you know what the hell just happened right here but if Sonic Fox beat FTD 3-0 then that's you know business as usual Sonic Fox moves on to top 8 winner's side I would I would say to try to throw bones towards losers during that time, um, you know things that they did correct, but then point out you know their Achilles heels, the things that they they couldn't cover. Yeah. Um, I would say that that's generally the strategy that I I try to go with is you know oh well, I was able to get Sonic Fox to block the uh, the Butcher's Blade assist a couple times, but just wasn't able to get hits off of it, so you know. It didn't do anything. It didn't. It wasn't enough. Yeah. And then, yeah, you know, something like that. Answering questions that you've you brought up at the start of the set. You know, the the so I early on I brought up the example of rival flaggers versus Mr. Peck. The question is, will rival flaggers be able to get in? Was rival flaggers able to get in? Yes or no? It's pretty simple. We knew that that was going to be the question at the beginning of the match, and at the end of the match, we know that the answer is. Yes or no? Maybe, maybe maybe it's even a yes, but so. Yeah, like you could say yes, Rebel killed Peacock, but Robo Fortune came in and tagged to Parasol, and Parasol just mixed the entire team or something. Yeah. So the the like Mr. Peck could have won, but the match didn't go how you would have expected it to, and that's yep. something unique that would have happened in the match or something like that. Yep. So. There's That's... not not a lot of else to sort of mention. It's sort of like um, you're sort of wrapping up how the set happened. If anything interesting or unique happened in the set, or and like trying to yeah trying to point out some things that the loser could do a little bit better, or like if they missed any crucial punishes or anything like that, like stuff like that. And do you have anything else you want to mention? 
Okay. No, I think that we've got a pretty good um, outline for like a general strategy guide of what to do during uh, an average block of commentary. That sure was a cool part of the podcast. So there will be two more parts coming up after this. And hope to see you there. See you guys around.